Okay, bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. Welcome to Mind Heist, episode 97. Oh, what are you wearing today, Muhammad? I'm wearing a thug, bro. Yes. Long sleeve. Long, I've had a long sleeve. Looks like your, looks like your wedding thug, bro. Um, no. <laughs> uh, I'm not getting married again, bro. What did you, what did you wear at your wedding? I wore a Moroccan thobe and a suit, and I would, I would alternate between them. You know the Moroccan one? Is that that golden kind of white color one? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, bro. That's good. I, uh, I just, I guess I'm stubborn or, I think I've just got something to do with my self-identity where I can't uh, fit in. I can't be the same. So uh, I ended up wearing something I don't know what it is. I guess the closest thing it would, it kind of looked Libyan to me. I don't know. Ooh. But it's just like, I got a thobe made and it was a, it wasn't any particular style. It didn't have a collar. Um, and then I got a, like a waistcoat made. And you know, those ma- waistcoat with the embroidery on it. That's kind of generally North African, isn't it? Uh, but I don't know. I just feel like it kind of was Libyan. I think Libyans wear that. I don't know, but yeah, so uh, didn't fit in any kind of normal thing, uh, but it was good. The lab, it's a long time ago now when we got married. Mm-hmm. Time flies. Yeah. What's your, uh... I don't know. I mean, you know, how many years has it been? Like six or more? Or... No. no. Oh, what we? I don't remember. I don't remember what year exactly. Yeah, it's been about four or five. Hmm. When you when you hit five, you can uh, start giving marriage advice. Oh, I don't think I'll ever give marriage. I, advice. I know you've been looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving marriage advice up on day one as a joke, but oh, I remember that. Advice. Yeah. I remember that too, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was good uh, because that's like everyone's favorite thing to do and they're all unmarried so when you got married you, you're like straight away <laughs> you've got, yeah. you've got the certificate bro yeah. <laughs> the certificate to but, prove it i mean I, I don't obviously know too many people but i do hear of quite a few divo- uh, divorces and so being married for five years feels like you know something significant uh these yeah, days alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, i don't know if you know if you've been married like two years three years four years like how does it go downhill from there? Um, one thing I've thought of is I can see how having children is a very significant thing. It, it can, I can see, I can actually understand how it could put strain on uh, a marriage. Um, mm. Because what happens is, I think it just gets, it could, it can get much more stressful, isn't it? Um, yeah. Much more to do. And I just like when you're lacking sleep, you tend to argue more, for example. And I can see how it can kind of escalate. And any uh, little issues you might have had without kids can become bigger things with kids, you know? Yeah. Um, but once you've had at least one child and things are still okay, then I don't know, what, what how can things go down from there? I don't know. Uh, people go through things that affect them. Um, and also people are maybe unstable. Sins are the Sins are the cause of a lot of disagreements bro and a lot of issues you know um you know if one person is well sometimes both sometimes one party is sinning and then that can lead to uh big disputes it can lead to uh remember we did that episode once on like the grass is greener i need to replay that i've been meaning to replay that one because i remember at the time i remember being really um happy with how that episode came out but that kind of notion that uh people focus on or get maybe they get they focus on like what could be as opposed to what they have and then i yeah. suppose um i suppose the only advice i've got for things like that is to uh obviously no know, notice what you appreciate what you love and try and expand on that and try and flourish whatever aspect of it is mm. that and then and also just narrow your narrow the scope of what you what you're after in life do you know what I mean? And really focus and, and give your everything to that. Yeah. Um, Maybe you think about uh, if, you know, assuming the first, you know, at least at least the first few months of your marriage was like really good. 
what made it good and, and try and redo yeah. some of those things, reincorporate some of those things. Yeah, but every, everyone has positives and negatives about them. And um, if you can't, you know, if you can't put that at the forefront, the positives at the forefront. I know that those are hadith that the Prophet sent them about. Uh, if you are displeased with your wife about one, I'm paraphrasing, but if you're displeased with your wife about one thing, then essentially remember remember the, you know the other things that you're you, you're happy about mm. okay nobody's perfect bro um and you also have to be on the same page and that should ideally be identified in the beginning um yeah. some people get married for the wrong reasons and then mm. those reasons fade away very quickly and then they're stuck yeah. with the stuff they disagreed on yeah i suppose that that could actually come out after for example two years of getting married um for example maybe when children first come into the equation and stuff like that you start to realize that your, for example, your life goals are not that compatible. Yeah. That could happen. Yeah. And then that's, that kind of stuff is very hard to yeah. uh, fix. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also, yeah, with the grass is green and stuff, it's like, obviously, I think a big factor is like, you got to remember what you have in the first place, like just, you know, having a shelter and food and, you know, comfort, that but kind of even comfort, it, that's a big deal. Even exposing yourself to, I know it sounds really, it sounds really common sense, but it's actually, I realize it's not something that people take into account too much, but like being, surrounding yourself with the opposite gender is going to really diminish the the quality that you, I don't know what you want to call it, but like the quality that you, the quality time or whatever that you have with your other half. Like if you're, for, for example, if, uh, a female that is always surrounded by male work colleagues or, or men in general, then it's going to, you're always going to have that notion of diminishing or comparing your husband to that person. And same with, with a guy surrounding himself with other women that aren't his spouse. There's always going to be even subcon on a subconscious level, there's always going to be this sort of comparative thing. Um, and it's the same way they, you know, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, don't even go near, don't even go near haram, let alone, you know, engage in it. It's because, if you don't, if you're not anywhere near it, you've got no basis to compare it to. For example, if 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 your wife is the only woman in your life, bar you know your mahrams, like your you know mother and sisters and stuff like that, you've got nothing to compare it to. Do you understand? And if you also surround yourself with brothers that don't talk about their their wives and, and complain and whatever you want to call it or praise mm. too much or whatever, like you don't want to be sitting with a brother who's going to just always praise his wife or talk a lot about his wife or whatever. And I, 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 sometimes that's happened in. In our, in our circles and it happens a lot with women as well women will complain to each other about their husbands right and sometimes in that complaining they ident they then realize that maybe the other person isn't complaining so the other person's husband's even better than their husband because they don't have that issue do you know what i mean like imagine you know you're sitting with a bunch of brothers or whatever or sisters if you're a sister and you're like oh my you know my husband is this and this and this he doesn't do this and then another says like oh my husband's never done that to me oh actually my husband does this and this and then suddenly that would be do you, do you know what i mean you're <laughs> yeah but this is how it builds up then you're like oh i've got a bad deal here and mm. and it builds up and then you just get your thoughts yeah. so ideally the company you keep has to be on the same page as you so your friends have to be quite you know another thing really powerful thing subhanallah is if you're a married guy then you should ideally all of your, well, at least most of your um, social circle has to be married as well, you know, and ideally stable. And same with sisters. I don't advise married sisters out with, you know, single women. Um, and I don't advise the same for men. I don't, you know, I don't advise men to be consumed with a circle that is all made up of single men, you know. Um, yeah. It's not healthy because you can imagine a, a single, you know, I mean, you know, we've all been there, bro, flipping a bunch of bachelors get together and all they're going to talk about is marriage bro and they're just not gonna especially if you've been married for a long time mm -hmm. um that that that's a conversation that you're just going to get wrapped up in and probably feel a certain type of way about but yeah it's incredible because the amount of the effect that outside of your marriage has on your marriage is is really powerful mm -hmm. and i don't think people think about it too much obviously there's always going to be stuff like focus on your marriage and do this with your your other half and etc etc but that's not how problems start problems tend to start internally and then they come out mm -hmm. you know you don't just suddenly start fighting overnight uh, out of nowhere there's always going to be some sort of internal build-up and that internal build-up is something that's happened 
or it's been happening in your private sort of away from each other or whatever yeah so so that's yeah. my take on it anyway mm, yeah even like uh going on instagram can make you feel a certain way etc yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah interesting and sometimes even people sabotage their marriage just for you know i think this is a cliche but you know the woman who's been married for like three years four years and it's like stable it's like going okay you know the, her husband's decent and stuff and she just wants uh, some kind of excitement some kind of um what's the word uh, spontaneity and so mm. she might she might cause an issue just to to fight to look looking for that um spontaneity yeah, yeah. Um, that's just a cliche but you get the point like it's about you know sabotaging it because it's too stable in a way but yeah maybe mm. that's why you need to have like four or five kids and you'll never have stability <laughs> yeah yeah true the kids kids are hard work bro they can take a lot out of the you know especially the mother they'll take a lot yeah. out of the mother and and women can maybe go through like if you're a, a mother's going to give everything up for her kids right so a complete you know element of self-sacrifice there where you know they're not going to dress the same way they're going to look after themselves the same way they're going to let themselves go in particular areas because they're just so consumed by looking after kids and then i assume there could be like a backlash of that you know one day that they start thinking about how they were beforehand and then mm. that can create issues and yeah um, same with men bro same with men men will start thinking and pondering about oh how life was you know looking through the past with rose tinted glasses they say you know remembering all the the, the, the quote-unquote great things that you had before mm. forgetting all the negativity like okay i remember like when we were well at least i remember me bro and, and a lot of brothers when we were married like the idea of getting married took up like 90 percent of our brain <laughs> you know what i mean like that those thoughts were always in our head bro we're always thinking oh when's it gonna happen who's it gonna be blah 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 how am i gonna and all these things and i know bro i'm not the only one to say that i know a lot of people that are in the same boat but then the moment you get married you can just sort of close the book on that yeah and you suddenly you've got all this brain space to think about <laughs> other things <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah alhamdulillah man i mean yeah we did we did episodes about this maybe uh, I don't know if 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 people give us enough cute questions and we could do an episode just answering that or something like that. I don't know. It could be interesting. Um, I just wanted to explain my background <laughs> because <laughs> I just okay. realized you see this book here. Yeah. If someone was to zoom into that, they'd realize it was some Christian book written in Turkish and it's not mine. <laughs> OK, <laughs> uh -huh. I, I look I looked it up. And it seems to be a Christian book. I really don't know what it's doing there. And the book above it, you can't really see. There's a book there above it. It's Tafsir Jalalain. So I don't know what, what, what kind of person has Tafsir Jalalain and then some Christian Tur book in Turkish. Oh, it's, it's, it's sending a message, bro, saying that the Islamic books are above the Christian books, bro. That's what he's saying. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it looks like... It looks like, is it got like sort of um, the same sort of art style as? Yeah, as, it looks like, like that. Quran cover. It looks like that. Because I was, I remember in locally here in the city, bro, I remember there was people giving dawah, quote unquote, yeah, to Arabs. They were targeting just Arabs. Yeah. And they were giving out books that from, from distance looked like the Quran. So mm. the same sort of pattern and stuff. Mm. Sort of like how that looks, at least from a distance. Wow. But then you wouldn't realize it's actually the, it's actually the Bible in Arabic. Mm. Okay. So they were literally, they yeah, were trying to basically... Yeah, they were low-key trying to trick people yeah, and thinking yeah. that they were giving out free Qur'ans. And... Yeah, I think I heard in uh, Indonesia they were doing that um, by, they, not the exact same thing, but they were preaching using words that Muslims use, um, but obviously okay. calling to Christianity. Um, so this one, I don't know, bro, I just took the, the, what's written on the cover and I put it into Google Translate and then this word came out and i was like, i don't know what that word means so when i googled it it said it was a christian thing so that's why i think it's christian but it's in turkish bro i don't i don't really understand anything in it but you can see the the lov lovely baroque um style of the furniture wow <laughs> really not my style <laughs> you're a fish out of water bro <laughs> but, but the re the rest of the apartment's not like that the furniture just just this one random just thing just uh, the mine high and, studio. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And this uh, lamp, dull looking lamp. Wow. Okay. No, I like it, bro. You look like it's like the Godfather, bro. You got some <laughs> absolute style right now. Yeah, That's yeah. That's it. I think what happened was in like whatever 1600s wow. Europe, 
they had this style and then like Arabs and Turks took it and, and they still like it in 2020 for some reason. Very much. Uh, that looks like that looks like every guest room in an Arab house, bro. Yeah, That's the yeah, sort of yeah. Stuff. And the sofas would still have plastic on them. And we never sit on there unless we have guests over. <laughs> but we never take the plastic off. And the remote control still has plastic on it. All that kind of stuff. These are all classic sort of... <laughs> yeah. Classic. You know, in the, the weekend, just past, we had a full lockdown, meaning no one should really go out for the whole weekend. Right. So, uh, that was interesting. I still went out, but in oh, a kind of garden to get area near the house. So oh, like yeah. yeah. Not excuses. that visible to the road and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, illegal. So. <laughs> trying to get, try, let me get in those Turkish prisons, bro. I'm sure that's not very fun. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but actually, tourists are allowed out. So uh, technically, I should have been fine even to go out, but nothing's open and stuff. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I really don't understand the logic behind it because uh, I'm sure, you know, the spread will stop for the weekend, but then, you know, it's only two oh, days to go, go right back. So. Bro, these rules are regs. We've got w rules at work. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking within the building, you have to wear a mask. But as soon as you sit down, you can take your mask off. And if you're sitting down working on a computer, you can take your mask off. But like, like I said, as soon as you stand up and you're about to move, you have to put it on. And you can only like you can only go out some doors as entrances, some doors as exits. And it's mm. like, what difference does it make? Is COVID more deadly if I'm standing up? <laughs> mm. But yeah, that's a whole episode. I feel you know what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, I don't know if Sharif ha even has opinion on this, but it feels like a Sharif episode. <laughs> 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 I was going to get, uh, I was speaking to a brother very briefly. In a, I basically put a post up on Instagram because you remember last week or the week before we spoke about very briefly about Trump and how like, yeah, uh, how he's like, in our, in our opinion, sometimes he, his policies benefit the Ummah worldwide as opposed to mm, maybe like American, you know, the yeah. American democratic sort of what they call it. Um, is it Democrats? American That's Muslim. what I'm trying to say. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, and I basically, he, uh, there was some article about Trump, like, trying to withdraw all of the troops out of Somalia. Yeah. So I, it was a bit tongue-in-cheek, but I put up, like, a post about it saying, oh, make America great. Maga. Again. Went, yeah, <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> and then uh, one of the brothers from New York replied to me and goes, oh, uh, you know, facts, like, he agrees with that. And I was like, oh, what, what's your sort of opinion on it, like, out there kind of thing? And he yeah. said the, he said he fully agrees. He says, like, despite, obviously, Trump's, sort of policy uh, views and stuff in general his his um sort of rhetoric is more in line his like what's it called fundamental values or christian values whatever you want to call them are more in line with what muslims would would identify with the yeah. only thing generally stopping it is like the racism towards obviously muslims and stuff and um yeah that kind of like sort of xenophobic sort of get out of our country kind of nonsense but but at the same time, actually, like, what what battle do you want? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all, it's one of those ones. Like, what what devil do you want to do you want to know? What devil don't you want to know? Sort one, of thing? one thing I wanted I didn't share in that when we spoke about it, which I wish I shared, which was that somebody I think it was a uh, oh man, what's his name? There's some uh, Imam uh, Dawood Walid. That's it, Dawood Walid. Okay, he's from the US. Yeah. He wrote a post. I believe it was him. Okay, he wrote a post saying that. Uh, when a Democrat gets elected president, um, hate crimes of this type always go up. They, they don't actually oh, really? go up when a Republican's in power because the type of people that would do those kind of attacks, they feel like business is being taken care of on a high level by the president. Oh, so, right. Right, um, yeah. But when there's a Democrat, they feel like, oh, he's going to go easy on them. So we need to do it ourselves, you know. Mm. So he said that's why, you know, now that Biden's got elected, um, you know, you should be actually extra aware, um, you know. There was some, um, I don't know who she is. I saw it being retweeted on Twitter, but I think she's like some sort of right wing personality, whatever. And she, she must have tweeted something like, oh, I will send my, I'd, I would send my kids to an Islamic school way before I send them to a public school. I think mm. speaking about that kind of sort of notion. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Ultimately, if you, uh, there's, you know, there's a, there's a devil in both sides, but uh, ultimately, what can you control more? Like you want to control the external more than you want to control the internal. Like the external factors are going to be like, okay, racism, because you're not going to find racism within your family. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to have racism seep into your family um, in the sense that 
let's say that the, the, the outside yeah, is racist towards you. Per se. Mm. Yeah, you're not going to have like, you're not going to be battling with racism yeah. in the sense that your son yeah, or your, your daughter, kids, yeah. yeah, they're going to be racist towards you or all this other stuff. However, with the liberal agenda, that's something mm. that penetrates within the mm. family and that's hard to battle, yes. you know? Yes. Um, it's hard to battle that completely. Yeah. So no, I would rather... I was thinking is just, just how, uh, what Muslims have done a lot in uh, the US especially <clears throat> is they've said, okay, what can we find in common with uh, the Democrats or the left wing? Um, and then we can ally on that and we can work with them on that because there's like strength in numbers and stuff, mm. right? So they've actually looked for ways to align themselves. Okay, so for example, mm. we're minorities and you guys support minorities. Okay, we're allied on that. We, we kind of campaign for human rights because we, we feel we're, you know, we're lacking or a lot of our people are lacking human rights and you guys are on that way. Okay, let's join with it. But if you, ha if you put that same effort, you could find ways to link up with the, the right side. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially, obviously, the, the Christian side of it. Now, maybe it's, I know there is, there is definitely among the evangelicals, which is the majority in the US, isn't it? Among them, there is this rhetoric of we kind of hate Muslims and they're like, yeah, yeah, hate yeah. And there is that. But it's like, I don't know, if you put the equal amount of effort, you might find like equal amount of um, support from, from those people as well. Maybe. I think there's the, I mean, I'm completely, you know, throwing out assumptions here, but like, if you were to sit down with, you know, this right wing side of things or the evangelicals or whatever and actually discuss the values that you agree on, yeah. you would get way more empowered. I think you'd get way more empowerment from them than you yeah. would the other side. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. It, like if you were to sit down and say, oh, this is our views on this and this is our views on that. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. You know, we're, we're totally about that. Yeah, um, socially uh, seems to be the case. The, yeah. I suppose the only difficulty you've got, like, I don't know. I mean, we took a look at France, for example, at the moment. I don't know where France is left or right. I don't bloody know who's in charge. But, like, that's, like, not something that you want to deal with, you know, like closing down of mosques and mm, really right, fierce right. sort of inve investigations and stuff like that. Um, even this new law that they passed recently, or at least they were trying to pass, with, it was like you can't film police officers or whatever. Like, that's, bro, that's like a problem. In man. France? Yeah, yeah. So this is mm. like, there's a lot of recent protests because they were, they, they've they either passed it or they're trying to pass it, where it's like this new bill that uh, forbids at least what the headline said, forbids, you know, the public from recording police officers on duty or whatever it is. Mm. And like, you know, I, I, uh, I get the threat level. Like I get some threat level of that. Like, oh, you know, police officers could then be followed home and, and their, you know what I mean? Their identity getting put out, whatever. But that's more on the police to sort out, not the public, you know? Like if there's a police officer doing something wrong and he's getting filmed, then that's you know, good good for the public for filming that. If they want to protect his identity, then they've got sh they should have like shoulder numbers or badge numbers or whatever. Um, if they are very sort of um, sen you know their, their identity is sensitive anyway, they could cover their faces like balaclavas or whatever. Some countries cover their faces with balaclavas completely. Um, obviously, with still numbers and stuff showing, but to 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 not film it really like opens the door for like absolute especially with a lot going on obviously in france and, and the, the position against muslims at the moment it's like oh yeah. my god that's like a recipe for disaster because we wouldn't know any of the stuff that's going on in the world well, without yeah, yeah. Know, people on the ground filming it's parlor yeah yeah and uh, i think it's you know what bro when you think of it i think when you step back and you look at it the way i see it is um in terms of the these like three european countries uh three western countries the us uk and france okay I feel like France is declining, has declined the most since like mm. the colonial days. They've declined the most and they're struggling the most for like um, economically and like, you know, in terms of even their, their companies, like a lot of these uh, countries, they have very lucrative, for example, um, arms manufacturers. Yeah. And the way that they, they make a ton of money from the government themselves basically being a salesman for these companies. Um, and then you have companies in France like Total, which is the oil oil company. So they, because of the politics, because of the colonial past, they get the contracts to extract oil from whatever, Algeria or whatever, right? Yeah. Now, uh, so th those kind of things are going downhill for France. Uh, generally, like the military superiority and all that seems to be declining. Obviously, socially, it's declined. So France is like number one. Then yeah. UK is behind them in terms of the regression, and then the US is behind them. So yeah. what we, I believe, we're seeing in France is, is, is basically the the beginning of the, what do they call it? 
the uh, you know Sakarat al Mot. What's that in English? So what's like the the throes of death or something. Throes of like death, that. exactly. Yeah. I believe it's the beginning of the throes of death. It's like when you're struggling and you're getting a bit desperate, you start to do these wacky things. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think that's what this is. This is what this is what it looks like. And this is uh, coming to any other country who has been on top of the world because of you know. Uh, colonialism and this and that and the world has changed and there's a new world order and uh, balance have shifted and now you get this kind of desperation and it's like very it's actually it's almost kind of you feel a bit of pity to watch because you can see how they still see themselves as up there um in their mind in their self-identity you know we're, we're kind of up there and superior and i've you know i know french people and french culture pretty well so a lot of them, they carry themselves with this superiority complex. So when somebody's got superiority complex, but they, they start losing things to back that up with, mm. you know, they can't point to things anymore and say, yeah, look, we're so good at this and look what we did here. Um, they, they're losing that. And so it's painful to see it, but, but that's the reality. You know, everything that goes up, goes down. And, uh, and that's uh, the thing. It's, 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 it's really interesting because like when you're in the thick of the when you're in the thick of the prime of these societies you just can't imagine how they would ever decline it's really hard and i, I can imagine this is probably how the you know the romans felt this is how the persians felt in their prime this is how the greeks felt in their prime like everyone in their prime in that present day scenario thinks oh we are the, the top of it and we are the, yeah. the greatest you know we're at the peak of civilization yeah. but now that you see it like bro like even like you know even like this whole thing of when when trump was saying that oh the elections are rigged and stuff like I was like, oh my god, this is like some uh, antiquity stuff going on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is something you read in a history book, bro. Like, you mm. know, people arguing over stuff that we thought we'd already achieved. Now, like, yeah, we thought that society, especially America, had already achieved like the election process, yeah. and democracy, blah blah blah. And even now, like, all it takes yeah. is a bit of a, you know, an yeah. injection of new sort of ideas, new technology, new sort of phenomena mm. to, to absolutely flip everything on its head. And it's not. Um... It's sometimes not, uh, it's where the, the people are not, they're not in touch with reality, okay? So, for example, uh, another, for example, a sign of, you know, these throes of death, sign of a declining civilization is the U.S., you know, it's been on top since about World War II, and they've been, you know, selling tons of weapons to people and everything. And now Turkey, you know, in the past year or two, um, they basically, that was it. You know, the way America deals with people, it's like it's a privilege to buy, for example, uh, these uh, anti-air or anti-missile uh, weapon systems off them, like the Patriot missile system. I think it was deployed in Turkey um, as part of NATO. Um, and it was like, you know, protecting Turkey, but obviously it's also in the, um, in the uh, interests of, of other NATO countries and stuff to have it there. So the, the US kind of, uh, I think they withdrew it um, or either they acted first, or Turkey, they went and bought their own, uh, the, the, they bought a system from Russia, okay, it's called like the S-400, and it does a similar thing, so America went nuts about that, I think it was at that point they withdrew the Patriot missile system, and then they said, uh, what the hell, you have to buy those kind of weapons from us, like, come on, we're in NATO, you've always been our customer, you got to buy it from us, what the hell? You know, yeah. <laughs> and it's and, and, and it's like they really got mad about it. Yeah. And then what the what the Turks did is they bought this uh, Russian system and they basically hacked it and they like to learn how it was built and they start trying to make their own one now. Yeah. So now even Russia might be getting mad about that. Right. Yeah. Um, but what the even up, up until recently, like a month ago, the US is still mad about it and they're still shouting like at Turkey about it, like. How dare you? You've got to buy our weapons, right? Yeah. And for me, it's again, it's like the the the, the, the how aggressive their reaction was shows that they're kind of panicking, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Definitely. They're like, what the hell? Like nobody ha was bold about that kind of stuff before, yeah. and now they feel like they they can go and do these kind of things. Like, what the yeah. hell, man? Um, yeah. But that's the thing. They they're seeing things through the worldview which is decades old. Uh, and now, like, Turkey's uh, apparently got very good at building their own drones. Um, they make their own uh, tanks. They've got those, uh, they created their own uh, ships for exploring for gas in the sea. And, you know, you can't, it, it's kind of like, a, it, in a way, it's similar to what happened 
with, uh, I'm trying to give a good example here. I don't know if people know, like, you know, um, now if I want to go and sell um, mugs with my own brand and design on, it's like so easy now, right? Mm. Or like t-shirts. It's so mm. easy. Maybe 20 years ago, I would have to buy a minimum order of like a thousand t-shirts and this and that, right? Or like mm. suppliers wouldn't even talk to me if I wasn't going to buy a huge amount. So it's like democratization, right? I feel right. like that's kind of happening now. It's like, now you don't have to go to like just the US or Russia to buy weapons. Now you could buy from China. You can make your own thing. You can piece different bits together. You can, you know, so de decentralization again of power um, seems to be and, happening. Yeah. The access of intelligence and information as well is just so much wider, bro. Mm -hmm. um, mate, there's probably a YouTube videos on how to build flipping uh, anti air rifle, <laughs> anti air missile system, bro. <laughs> Literally, you got scientists just looking it up on YouTube, bro, and it's there. <laughs> I don't advise print. anyone. Three don't, advise, <laughs> don't advise anyone to search that kind of stuff. You don't want that on your search history. No, no, Unless no. you're on tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you probably life. buy the blueprints on, on uh, the dark web. America gets angry, bro. You have to look at our videos, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. It's How wild. It's wild. Let's okay, go into you like that. Yeah. Oh, what well, we doing? Going into what the the oh my crazy topic? I don't know if if you got enough because uh, I I ran out of material, so I thought we actually go to the main topic now after thirty main minutes. Topic. Let's have a look. Uh, Let's go to the main topic. Is it a main topic? Let's find out. Right. Uh, I'm telling you, bro. This topic, I don't feel like I've got ammunition for this. So let's see. <laughs> you know, let's see. Okay. I mean, wanted to talk about UFOs. Funnily enough, why would why, what spurred this on? I mean, what was it again? Somebody messaged something, or yeah. So uh, Kaya, who's been on the podcast twice, he's like, you know, what I realized with you guys when you bring these. He said not conspiracy theory, but these like alternative views to things. Like, uh, what were we talking about a few episodes ago? Um, oh, we're talking about like ancient civilizations. Yes. And stuff. So yeah, exactly. So he's like, like that episode, like the Black Lives Matter episode, like. You should do more stuff like that. So that, then I said it to you, and then you're, you're like, yeah, I know some UFO stuff we could talk about. Oh, bro, look at this, bro. There's even more news going out about UFOs. Okay. So like back in July, back in the summer, yeah. uh, I shared I shared it a lot on YouTube, not YouTube, like social media and stuff about, um, I'm just looking at articles now about like um, how the Pentagon came out and they were no longer in the shadows, essentially saying that UFOs were something that were legit and something they were investigating and uh, they were going to make some findings public. They released two videos. Um, this was broken on the New York Times. They released two videos of unidentified flying objects recorded by um, F1 pilots, or whatever they're called, with like commentary and stuff where the pilots are getting like super excited because they don't understand what they're following and stuff. I recommend like looking it up. Um, I recommend having a look uh, on the New York Times and there's also um, a very lengthy Joe Rogan podcast with mm. uh, Commander Fravor, I believe he is, who was one of these F1 pilots. Mm. So F15, right? F15, whatever. Mm. Yeah, you're right. F1's whatever. Grand Jet, Prix, Jet. bro. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> uh, F something, bro. Uh, these uh, sort of fighter jet pilots. And mm. um, lo long story short, I'll briefly go over what he said. So he essentially said that he was out on a training exercise. Um, uh, from what I can remember, they have like dummy, they don't have live weapons on there. I don't think they do anyway on these training sort of jets. Um, anyway, they're out in the middle of like the somewhere near Mexico, the but body. out on the ocean, mm. out on the ocean. Mm. And they were um, sort of doing whatever maneuvers and stuff. And then the, their controller was like, oh, we need you to go to such and such location, which is like miles away from the, um, the, the carrier, you know. Um, they're like, oh, why sort of thing. And they're like, oh, there's been this sort of anomaly that we've been monitoring for a few weeks now. I want you to check it out. Mm -hmm. And they go and they basically, he describes like some sort of like tic-tac shaped object that he sees like coming out of the water and then sort mm -hmm. of like, um, they're sort of doing, um, he says he does, it's kind of like this maneuver. If you've got the camera on, you can see um, sort of like a circular maneuver around it, basically mm -hmm. while staring at it. So facing it, but going around. Oh. Um, they're doing that to monitor it because they can't stop in midair. So they have to basically circle it to observe yeah. it. Uh, essentially, they say that like it, the way it was turning on the spot, it was like it was very aware of them and it was monitoring them. And then it suddenly just shoots up in the sky like super quick, mm. uh, like something that they couldn't even like 
didn't even exist in their terms. They just couldn't make any sense of it. And then apparently like it disappeared like in an instant. And then, then the controller who was miles and miles away on the carrier stated that, oh, it's just turned up next to us. And then apparently comes back. And then he comes back to the carrier and he gets really excited and he tells the rest of the pilots, like, oh, this is what I've just seen. Mm. They then get in their jets, go out for their opportunity. And that's when they record these videos. So he's not the one that recorded this video, these videos. But yeah, he saw the initial but thing. The, the strong thing about him is that he is not like some X this or X that or some. He's like a well-established pilot from this day and age who exists mm. now. And he's got the badges and the medals and the certifications mm. to prove it. And I'm sure there's many other people of that kind of nature. Mm. What was his anyway, conclusion? His conclusion was like, yeah, there's definitely something that we can't explain. And then there was like mm. the intelligence, the senator, what's his name? Uh, Marco Rubio, I think. Mm. Uh, who, what is his? He is, he's an American politician serving as the senator, United States senator from Florida. Um, he said, he has, used to be something to do with intelligence at one point. Right. Um, he basically did a CNN interview where he said, um, yeah, there's basically things that we don't know what they are. Because the interviewer on CNN, I think, was asking him, like, oh, do you think it's aliens? He's like, what we, what we can say is that it's nothing that we believe anyone else on this country has, like in, in these countries have, like on the world. Um, we don't know what it is. We hope it's not like Russia or China or whatever. Um, anyway, so, you know, using very political speech, but stating that there's stuff going on. Um, that... But prior to that, I was talking about obviously the Pentagon's articles, and they were saying now basically that they've got a, they're calling it now officially UAP, so unidentified aerial phenomena. And that is, I think part of that is going to be to detract away from the, the stigma that UFOs have. Yeah. So they're politicizing it a bit. And they say that basically every six months they're going to release more and more stuff. Now, funnily enough, that was six months ago, right? More or less. And I just Googled to look up for that article, I Googled all. Well, I'm looking for, like that article, and then there's a four days ago article that's come up on like Daily Express, Daily Mail, uh, possibly other, maybe CNN as well. And it's basically saying a leaked Pentagon UFO task force photo shows a sil silver cube across the Atlantic that they they claim is like uh, US intelligence stunned by a mysterious uh, like alien object. It's very mm. hard to see this picture, but. You might be able to see it on the camera. If they've zoomed in there. It's like some, can you see that weird shape? Yeah. Sort of thing. Oh, anyway, right. they've zoomed in. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ultimately, you know, this puts us in a bit of a, there's always theories and whatever, but it put me in a bit of a thought process about like, okay, UFOs, where do their place, so where's their place in, in our worldview, you know, our Islamic worldview? Yeah. Um, you can't help but think like that. So I started thinking like that. Um, and when I say UFOs, I'm not necessarily saying, aliens or whatever but let's keep it really basic just things that we don't understand you know yeah. that are in our maybe flying around in our in space or in our atmosphere or whatever now i think a lot of people uh that watch movies and sci-fi stuff and whatever they can find they they may feel some sort of impact to their dean and their email when they see stuff like this and it might be because they're not understanding it in the right context you know um because because uh, what they might do is accept the narrative that's being fed to them instead of trying to establish their own based on the Quran and Sunnah. You know? okay. So like the established narrative is like, oh, if we're not alone in the universe, then it, and it takes away all this religion from us and we're something free of religion and free of all these preconceived notions that we have. You know, if we're not the only ones here, then uh, maybe aliens created us or maybe, you know, they oh, are part of some longer evolution right thing. And You know Reptilian. what I mean? Yeah, well, something like that. <laughs> but, and then... But we have to understand, like, you know, there's there's nothing stopping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from creating whatever he wills, right? Um, there's also nothing to say, and this is where I led my thing onto, my sort of rabbit hole thought process, was like, there's nothing to suggest that these can't be uh, part of the creation of the jinn, for example, right? These things that we see, these, these things that we see at distance or things that are flying in the atmosphere, whatever. Um, and there's little things that add up, you know? And part of that is what this long sort of question set that I came across when I asked this question on Google. <laughs> I thought we'd go through it a little bit. Mm. It's, it might be quite long, but I'll read bits of it at least. And we'll, we'll go back and forth with what this, whoever okay. this person is. So somebody asked the question, are oh, jinn in the Quran really UFOs, right? And mm. it's a thought, you know, it's a thought thing, you know, it's a okay. thought thing. So um, this person, he hasn't necessarily provided 
you know, he might say hadith, but he won't say which hadith it is or whatever. Mm. But it's stuff that sounds relatively familiar to me, so it may exist. Yeah. He said, to answer this question, we need to look into both realms of ufology and Islam to know the differences or similarities. So apparently, according to Quran hadiths, I don't think, you know, I don't know, but it says there are three types of jinns. Those who are flying and change the shape. Those who cr usually crawl on their bellies and transform into snakes, dogs, and various other animals, as in shapeshifters. And uh, the third are like humanoid like and they walk on earth, rest and resume their travel. Now that sounds very familiar to me. I think I've I may have read that in a hadith somewhere. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. I I'm pretty sure I have. Mm. But in the sense of flying, we have we have some kind of evidence of that in the Quran, where um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to paraphrase, speaks about how the jinn would try and you know reach the heavens and they would get struck down by by um Surah Al Rahman, yeah. Yeah. Um, by meteorites or shooting stars or whatever you want to call it so there's an element there of 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 jinns sort of doing way more than we can in that in that respect you mm -hmm. know at least the way it's a low anim whether they have their own sort of this is another thing like the jinn are such a they're a creation mm -hmm. like humans in the sense that they have free will mm -hmm. but there's nothing necessarily in the quran that discusses uh, a, a human's, uh, well, as far as I'm aware, a human's uh, drive for technology and self -improve, in, in, improvement in technology, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's to say that, that doesn't exist with the jinn? Like, what's to say that the jinn don't also have technology or they don't also build or iterate upon, you know, their, the way they live their life? Does that mean that the jinn from, you know, 10,000 years ago are the same as the jinn today? Are there, is there any sort of progression or, you know, in their methods or in their beliefs or what they do or how they, you know, in, the, in their world sort of thing? Mm -hmm. So, is that element? Was that element of it? Um, then he says, uh, so he goes on to break bits down. He says, um, Yeah, bro, this is a moment to have, to have Jamie pull it up for us, isn't it? <laughs> Who's Jamie? Jamie? Oh, Jamie bro. from the Rogue the yeah. podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I was, I'm trying to search at the same time as listening to you. I was trying to search about the three types of gin. Anyway, go ahead. I haven't gone into this too much, so I don't know what parts are going to be relevant to this discussion or not. Anyway, he, he has a point here. He says, all of them can actually shape shift, as I'll explain further in the text. Allah Alam, how he's going to do that. Uh, they are created from the smokeless fire, as it could have been the only way to explain to thousands of people years ago. Today, the term smokeless fire could be attributed to the fourth state of matter. We have solid liquid and gas, uh, and a gaseous state of matter. And the fourth state, which you've probably heard of, is plasma. Uh, plasma is no more than extremely heated gas consisted of atoms which have uneven number of electrons in reference to the number of protons in that same atom. And they are called the ions and other ingredients as free electrons. Uh, jinns or demons in Western civilizations are supposed to, uh, supposed by some scientists to be of plasma-based life. Mm. Once again, there's no, there's no, the thing about this post is that there's no, real references or anything it's sort of all conjecture but it's yeah. just an interesting thought I mean, experiment uh jinn is created from fire right mm. like we do know that from yes. the Quran, yeah yes um now the way you get from fire to plasma that's that's yeah. all your reason that's all conjecture yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. Interesting. but then it, 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 i think what they're doing there is they're drawing some sort of the air so conjecture from the same notion as humans are created from clay and then you break down what humans are made of and is it at least from our perspective do you know what i mean yeah isn't humans being made from clay is that not from adam being created from clay could be i wouldn't know. um not like every single human but our origin yeah. perhaps because uh, if we look at ourselves now we would say oh we're like mostly made of water yeah, right. but our origin is is the clay. Allah alam. Allah alam. So this is something that I've always assumed. This point here, he says, all of the apparitions that haunted people since the morning of humanity, like elves, fairies, gremlins, ghosts, pol poltergeist, cryptid animals like Bigfoot, Mothman, etc., are the results of jinns. So if people believe that they truly saw something, like for example, if you were to say that you went through some sort of experience and you saw something, uh, you as a Muslim would automatically believe that's a jinn. Do you know what I mean? You'd say, okay, uh, that's that's some sort of supernatural jinn phenomenon that i've just yeah. experienced or something i mean I've seen, depending right? though depending because <clears throat> there is creation that we might not know about on earth yeah, true. Um, so i would you know i think personally me obviously it hasn't happened to me but i would actually if it had characteristics of what people know to be jinn like i would assume yep. it's a jinn 
Yeah. But otherwise, if it if it was different to that, I might say, you know, uh, something else. You know, that yeah. we don't know about or true. You know, there's, see that's that, and that's and to to stick my point in, that's also the whole thing about UFOs as well. Like just because we see these things, doesn't mean they're not just some sort of you know live phenomenon that doesn't necessarily have to be from like a, a billion miles away. It could mm. be something that's very much homegrown on Earth that we just don't understand yet. Yes, um, you and know what I mean. The sea yeah. has a lot of undiscovered stuff in it. Definitely, yeah, sure. Um, he says today the new trickery are the aliens and UFO apparitions. In fact, these kind of apparitions are practically very old. These aliens are have been visiting Earth and human civilizations since the antiquity as gods, creators, and they are even described and mentioned in various ancient scripts. Now, that's something that doesn't. Um, that would. That's another thought exercise that doesn't necessarily surprise me so you have all these sort of stories that can either be one or two things or three things i say one out of three things so let's say all these stories that are linked to religions in the past right um some there's always elements of truth in there right there's mm -hmm. always like bits and bobs like, that like you what could kind say. of story like so let's i mean each religion has its stories no matter how far you go in terms okay. of how from the most monotheistic religions to the most you know Pagans. whatever you want to call pagan mm. religions yeah there's like there's some sometimes you often find like some things that line up with what we consider the truth obviously a lot of the majority is completely wacko but like at what point does it get to that point because our belief system as muslims is that everybody started as a believer in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everybody was from adam right so our our typical narrative is that uh people deviated through time you know, and time is going to deviate that at different levels, depending on what sort of cultural impacts there are, you know, for example, um, you know, the deviations we see in Islam is one of the most re recent religions. And when I say Islam, I mean, Muslims, the most, uh, it's not as, as strong as the deviations you may see in Christianity, which was what the most recent before Islam, but then yes. look at like Hinduism, which is one of the most oldest religions to date at the moment that we know of the deviations we'd call it because we'd say that the lineage of, of Hinduism must have started with somebody being a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somewhere back in, down yeah. the line. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm you. <laughs> Way back in the line, bro. So where, yeah. where does the deviation start? You've got to think like deviation doesn't just look at, you can't look at bid'ah as something that only exists in monotheistic religions. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers. You have to look at it in terms of every single religion that exists on earth. Yeah. You know, because Ultimately, it all came. We all came from the same, you know, Adam and, and Hawa. We all came from that same lineage. Yeah. So at some point, either somebody's made up some crazy religion out of the blue, or it's been deviated and deviated and deviated to the point that you don't even recognize the original, you know, Islam, so to speak. Yes. Or the third option is that it's actually um, the in, the influence of jinns and apparitions and whatever. For example. For example, look at the, the you know the notion of black magic, right? Black magic com communing with jinns to gain something from them, but you have to offer something to them. Yes. Suddenly, you can you can develop a whole religion based mm. on that. That's kind and of well a, known, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and if there's a particular jinn that wants to name himself something, then suddenly yeah. that becomes a lord that you worship. Yeah, you know. And if you have yeah. many jinns, then suddenly you've got a pantheon of yes. of, of these you've quote got unquote, Greek gods. Yeah, you've got a pantheon of people that yeah. are in fighting whatever that are fighting over the attention of this human being to ah, yes do you understand so what i'm trying mean, to say so you mean a multiple jinn gods competing yeah, gods. for followers yeah yeah exactly so yes. you know yeah. factions or whatever it is so when yeah. you you know because ultimately when I... jinns want to humiliate humans by exactly pushing them into shirk not all jinns the bad jinns yeah, yeah. the shayateen so, yeah I, I had a discussion once with some brothers about it was just a crazy theory of mine but it might help some weight my theory was that jinns were a lot more open to revealing themselves to people or engaging in, in some sort of behavior with human beings in the past because it wasn't necessarily something that would, um, what's the word? It wasn't necessarily something that people would be too shocked that existed. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, uh, a jinn appearing in the past wouldn't necessarily, um, how did I think about it? It wouldn't affect somebody's belief in, in God because they thought that that, that existed already. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So for example, I'm, I believe in God either way. Let's say I lived 
5,000, 10,000 years ago, but I had a belief in God and I had and part and parcel of that belief in God means I also believe in the unseen. Mm, yeah, so when I see unseen. something of the unseen, it doesn't change my belief in God. Yeah. Now this day and age, right? Mm. If a jinn appeared, mm. suddenly something supernatural appeared to me. As yeah. Let's say I'm an atheist. Yeah. If I'm an atheist, something supernatural appears to me. I'm like, oh, I need to rethink what my notion is. And yeah. then suddenly a byproduct of that is me believing in God. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So maybe so with the rise of closer to the right path than exactly. Yeah. So maybe with the rise of atheism, mm. sh shaitan soldiers mm. decided not to do as much mm. because that would actually jeopardize their ultimate mm. plan. They all went because... to work in Hollywood instead. <laughs> this There's is more, more effective way. <laughs> Just, but you see what I mean? <laughs> it's a, it's a big it's a theory, but I I have I've always had it that I think that the supernatural and the mysterious and whatever occurred more. Uh, in olden times, maybe because we couldn't explain as much, but also because it didn't affect people's belief in God. So the only way they could take away their belief in God is by enticing them to do things yeah. or, or, or bribing them in a way or offering it's, them something that they it's thought definitely God something to think about because every single culture has, an, has some element of some idea, some concept of uh, whether it's demons, whether it's uh, spirits, you mm. know, like <laughs> I'm just remembering uh, Mulan, you know, the old uh, Disney film where yeah. they talk about spirits and the ancestors yeah. and the spirits of the ancestors. You know, come on, Jin. Yeah. And uh, if you go to like, I mean, I'm sure it's in the UK as well, but I just remember in uh, in Paris, you know, these old cathedrals, they have uh, gargoyles. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that, like that, bro? That's probably what was that gin. about? <laughs> yeah, that's probably, I mean, where do you oh. even get the idea from that from? Like, uh, for so that from? Some conspiracy theorists, uh, or I don't know, theorists, whatever you want to call them, would say that the only way now for for a powerful impact of jinn to, to sort of get involved in in really fueling more sort of diversion away from God or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by presenting themselves as UFO, as alien bees, as extraterrestrial, more intelligent things from outer space. I have nothing. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I see where so that's, went. Mm. So that's the flavor of the day now. Um, and yeah. that's what he kind of goes on to. So he says, you know, today their new trickery is aliens and UFOs and apparitions mm. because we've already got a set narrative built yes. by movies and industry. And, and, and it's more based on quote unquote science, isn't it? Yeah. It's, no, it, it's not supernatural. It's actually natural. Yeah. So actually now with all of that being, now that with the stage has been set mm. for, you know, if an alien turned up tomorrow, bro, and said, oh, actually, by the way, you humans, I mean, look at my ship, for example, look what it can do. It can go, you know, travel at the speed of light, hypothetically. Tic Tac, baby. Oh, yeah. And by the way, you guys aren't an accident. We, yeah. we, um, we, we basically started your race off uh, mm. millennia ago. You're mm. actually our creation. And this, mm. this kind of ties into like, you know, the whole Dejel theory or how Dejel will present himself or whatever. Like, for Dejel to come and say that he is God, he has to prove that he is, he has something about him that is supernatural for people to follow him yeah because if i went to the street now and said i am you know i'm your lord or i'm a deity or a human being did that no one's going to believe them they're going to think like wacko jacko so for them they need to actually present something absolutely supernatural that's quite know? mad that's quite mad yeah 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 so like, um, yeah why would why you may ask would uh would they present themselves as aliens uh they are only what we are imagining them to be in the new age people were fantasizing about them and space exploration um the herman obert i don't know what that is was imagining the travel into space and when he was building rockets for the school project when he came when he was a kid since then the jinns have become i don't know whoever wrote this probably english isn't their first language um they can manipulate the reality around us the word jinn means the hidden one they decide whether they will be seen by one or more people uh all right considering their flight so he's put some examples here in terms of their flight he's he's he hasn't put in the actual names of the soar but he's written 70 chap um maybe verse 72 chapter 8 or vice versa he says the Bujins have sought uh, to reach the heaven but found it filled with powerful guards and burning flames in this verse it shows that they can fly I'm not sure if they can fly using crafts or they can just fly by their own nature and it says and Bujin used to sit there in, in the positions for hearing but whoever listens now will find a burning flame lying in wait for him um things like this you know the, ultimately what does that second one mean what was he saying that it mean he's saying in this verse seems they had some kind of technology to spy in the heavens. Allah alam. It, you know, we don't know if it's a technology-based thing or if it's part of their nature, you know. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, you know, he said uh, that second one, that's sort of to jinn, isn't it? Well, I just yeah, I think all of this is. Vaguely, the ayah is uh, 
I just remember maqad lisama, like yeah. seats for listening. Yeah. And then we go, and we and we jinn have become certain that we will never cause failure to Allah upon earth, nor can we escape him by flight. Um, yeah, Surat al Jinn. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And then obviously, uh, Surat al Mulk. So you've got. Uh, yeah. So there's all these elements of jinn being a bit more able to traverse more than us at the moment. And let's just think about it, bro. Like, bro, yesterday I saw clips from like SpaceX's rockets re-landing. So I saw a video, bro, of like their rockets coming back from space and mm. literally landing in wherever mm. it was. Like just, quite mad, it, isn't it? Bro, it looked like some sci-fi movie. I couldn't believe it exists. Yeah. Like you look at that and you're like, how does that even exist? Mm. But to think, like present that to, to Muslims or to people like, you know, 2000 years ago or whatever, and you just be like, what? Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? SubhanAllah. So consider what's stopping Jinn having technology if they have life so that they get married if they have kids if they have you know what i mean they have all these things about them and they've been in existence way longer than we have theoretically speaking yeah i think you this know? is where knowledge of the sharia comes in because uh what i remember yani vaguely um is that jinn actually are not smart no um and that's why they are they have an inferiority complex to us um but one of the reasons anyway they're not mm. that smart but they're able physically mm. so they can fly they can lift heavy things um they can go very fast they can travel very fast but in terms of brains they don't seem to have that wallahu alam that's what i remember from mm. i can't remember if, if it was in you know ibn kathir's bidayu and nihaya where he talks you know beginning of time kind of thing he talks about the jinn and the thing, you know, the jinn and the khin and stuff yeah. that were on earth before humans. Maybe it was from that, or maybe it's just uh, there was a lecture and he was talking about mm. that. But that's what I remember, you know, that they're not that intelligent. Um, and that's one of the reasons. So maybe that would rule out the technology thing. And that's what I'm saying. That's where the knowledge yeah. of the sharia comes in. It could be. Yeah. yeah. But it could also vary. I mean, I'd say the majority of humans aren't. You know, <laughs> humans, no, but humans in general, think about it. Humans. Yeah. You know, if I told you to build a rocket, you wouldn't be able to. Neither yeah. would I. Yeah. Neither would any human you pick out on their own. Yeah, we build but up. It's a collective. Uh, it's a collective effort. Yeah, stand of, on the shoulders of giants. Shoulders of giants, and it may be a similar yeah. thing, bro. Yeah, let, let, maybe I try and look at that. Uh, those ayat. I just wanted to quote this ayat because it's like general, very general. Sort of the scene. Allah says, "Subhanallah, the Khalaq al Azwaja kullaha min ma tumbit al Arda wa min wa min anfusihim wa min ma la yalamun." So what they don't know. So yep. I don't know if this the tense here suggests that it's something we will not know or just generally they don't know now, but something to look into. That's like a general area about creation and stuff. Yep. Uh, what was I say? So what kind of grows out of the ground when fussy him from themselves and what they don't know. Hmm. Uh, Allah, if we prepared, we, we could uh, see, look at those things. Now let me go we to also, sort of gin while you talk. Yeah, go on. We've also got the notion of how, and Allah knows best, obviously, but how do they how do jinn practically live amongst us without us seeing them? Like what if we understand the world, if Allah has made it so the world can be understood in a physical sort of way that where things can be tested through science through the scientific method, for example, yeah, then in what way can we establish that jinns exist amongst us? And you know, they yeah. argue now about you know the dimensional thing so there could be yeah a, you know a, a different dimension within this you know the dimension that we're in that allows them to see us and we, we not see them or that's mm -hmm. how they move in and out so that's another way of 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 that phenomenon being explained through observable phenomenal or ever tested phenomenal theories that they have these this day and age so he's written here like um now we can see that the UFOs can barely be the jinns, the creatures are able to live beside us on Earth as a fourth dimensional creature. So that can partially explain why these UFOs are soundless when they're flying, exhibiting impossible uh, maneuvers, etc. Um, mm. If they're not bound by the same sort of rules that we have. Uh, what else? I think he's talking a lot about um, people's uh, understandings of UFO and UFO sightings and stuff like that, why they've changed throughout the years. Mm. Um, so yeah, so these are jinn. So I, I've read this hadith. It's, he hasn't written this, but I remember I read this hadith about. Do you ever read the hadith about the, the Sahabi that was kidnapped by the jinns for like? No. It's a very. It's a, oh, it's it's a. 
it's quite a popular one. I believe it was um, classic authenticated by Sheikh Al Bani. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase it. And I really don't want to butcher the story. Mm. Oh, here we go. The man who was abducted by jinn. Oh, here no. we go. This is even a better one. Find so in the back of a tic tac, bro. Find I'm not using. <laughs> I'm not using Islam Q and A because it because that's where I found it. It just happened to be where I've searched and it's come up again. I've previously read it, I think, in one of the books of Hadith. But he said, um, I've heard many stories about the jinn kidnapping humans. I read a story which said that the man of the Ansar, may Allah be pleased with him, went out to pray Asia and the jinn took him as prisoner and he was lost for years. Is this possible? Um, now, the Sheikh has replied, uh, with regard to the question of possibility, it is possible, but it is very rare. Sheikh Abdul, uh, Abdullah ibn Jibreel, may Allah be, uh, preserve him, answered this question and said, that is possible. It is well known that Sa'd ibn Obada was killed by the jinn when he urinated in a hole in which was their dwelling place. And they said, we have killed we have killed the leader of Khazraj, Sa'ad ibn Ubeda. We struck him with an arrow and we did not miss his heart. So what that already arrow? states. So that this is what I mean by technology. There's some there's, there's things there that we obviously aren't aware of. Mm. Um, anyway, at the time of Omar, a man was kidnapped by the jinn and stayed with them for four years. Then he came back and told the people that some mushrik jinn had kidnapped him and he stayed with them as their prisoner. Then some Muslim jinn launched a campaign against them and defeated them and brought him back to his family. My. This was mentioned in Manar al-Sabir and elsewhere. See Manar al-Sabir uh, 2 slash 88. The story of the kidnapped mm. man was reported by al-Bayhaqi and its isnad was, cal- was classed as sahih by al-Albani in al-Irwa. Um, so that already you're like, okay, that kind of changes the flavor of what we know. And also, it kind of lines up with like people getting abducted by UFOs, bro. Like back in the day, yeah. Or at least, do you know what I mean? So, like, if Jin could do it, then, then it may be rare, of course. You don't necessarily hear about it every day, yeah. but in however many billions of people there are on the Earth, there's always that one person that says, "Oh yeah, I was abducted by UFOs, and they did this to me, and did that to me, and this is what they looked like." And mm. so, this is why, bro. Like things line up in, in certain aspects. I might be being a a crazy conspiracy theorist but at the end of the day like i take what the quran and sunnah especially obviously the sahih uh, hadith say Mm. as as true bro so when i read something like that it opens up my perspective of what i can accept in the modern day in in what's going on these days yes Uh, anyway let's see yeah definitely bro there's no yani our the limitations that we would put on jinn like what they can do and can't do would be based on quran and sunnah otherwise it's like It's kind of unknown what otherwise it's unknown what they can and cannot do so we can't like rule them out yeah uh, okay he's gone he's gone too deep into like ufology which i don't really study too much i guess it's just like different types just, of aliens and ufos you study that on the side isn't it? yeah but bro <laughs> like there's people and it's true like there's people that i don't know bob lazar for example was somebody that was on the joe rogan podcast oh, he is credited with sort of blowing the cover of Area 51. Um, okay. He, bro, I watched his documentary, but I also watched him on the Joe Rogan Experience. And actually, like, when he talks, it's like, he's just dead serious. Like, you know, when somebody's like, it's really strange, bro, because you think someone like this is going to be just lying through their teeth, but you don't see any signs of lies, like mm-hmm. in their body language and their behavior. Okay. Like, I watched a video of him from when he was. I don't know, back in like the 80s or 70s or whatever. And then mm. I watched the recent one and I kind of compared the two stories and bro, they're still the same exact story. Like he doesn't change it. Mm. He doesn't adjust it. He says what he remembers, sign. but he also doesn't say things that he doesn't, he can't remember. Like there's this whole thing about him saying that he may have seen a UFO, like an alien, sorry, but he wasn't sure. So even now he's like, I don't know. Like I might have, I don't know. But if you were wow. going to lie, you might as well say you saw it. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But essentially his story is that he, you know, he landed a job there. He didn't, he said, kind of says that landed he didn't know obviously where? what, a job in Area 51. Area he was 51. basically like an engineer. He was yeah. making like all sorts of things in his garage and stuff. He put like a jet engine on a car because mm. he, that's the sort of person he was known for. Mm. Um, and then he landed a job. He was applying for loads of jobs. He landed a job at some firm, uh, or some sort of where like he didn't know what it was it was a government job he didn't know where he was going like mm. on his first day it was all this sort of security and all this stuff he eventually got taken to this hangar and there was like three well, the way he describes it i think three basically craft 
that he couldn't explain. He'd never seen anything like it. And each person had to work on a craft and basically study it and try and replicate it, like replicate mm. the technology. And he said, like, he went into one of, he goes on about going into one of them. And it was like, it was almost like it was made for like small, much smaller beings. Like he had to crouch to sort of function it. Mm. He couldn't see any sort of apparatus that was familiar. The technology was all weird and strange to him. Um, what else was there? It was like all one color, like all sort of like, um, kind of like dark green, sort of bluey color. Um, but he said like somebody died there, bro. He said like the person he was working with, I think, had essentially didn't know how to work something and it ended up killing him. Some sort of explosion, whatever. And then they brought someone else. Anyway, then he started, I think, going, I think, I can't remember, long story short, he must have left or something might have happened. And he started trying to blow the cover on it. And they, they were sending security after him. Basically, his life was made hell uh, because of all this sort of stuff. But, you know, have a listen if you're interested. Um, it's out there a lot, bro. And obviously, there's going to be things that you, you don't believe. But the, the bottom line is, bro, they've gone on record now. Like, this isn't like we're not messing about anymore in a sense. It's um, just people. Yeah. It's government, like it's official that the Pentagon, at least, or at least American government, has gone out of their way to say, oh, by the way, you know that thing you lot have been, you know, thinking about for hundreds of years? Oh yeah, we agree. There is stuff out there we don't understand, and um, here's a here's a couple of videos of it. We don't know what it is, uh, but we'll let you know. We'll keep you up to date. Which means all of that time they knew there was stuff going on, <laughs> and they didn't say. Mm. So God knows what they know now that they haven't said that they will say in a hundred years. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. And Allah knows best, Achi. I don't know if this ties into, you know, my my theory has always been like, you know, this will always tie into like Dejel and stuff like that, bro. Um, you know, the whole sort of notion of, because I've seen that sort of narrative in movies, bro. I've seen that sort of narrative of some sort of extraterrestrial or external entity coming to earth and claiming that it is our God or claiming that it's our sort of, you know, advanced leadership, whatever. And actually we all, we should be following this. And, and you know it, bro, if flipping, if some sort of ET looking thing came down to Richard Dawkins and said, Oh, by the way, you know, I made you and actually I'm your Lord. He'd say, yes, just, I agree. You know, and yeah. you know it, bro. Oh, and by you the know way, it. <laughs> you didn't come from nothing. I made you, but I, I made from you nothing. Look at this tech. <laughs> look at this technology I've got in my hand. Look what I can do that you can't. Bro, they'd be all over it, Achi. They'd be all over it. Um, mm. You know, it, but if, you know, that's, that's the sort of, that's the, the religion of today, bro. Is that the religion of today? Is that kind of thing? I mean, I think, honestly, bro, if you look around the world, um, most people are still quite, I don't, I don't know about, re yeah, religious, you could say, yeah, religious. Like, of course, yeah. Like, if you, if you look at India, you know, it's over a billion people. You know, they're quite yeah. into their religion. Now, their belief in their religion is probably weak, to be honest, isn't it? Because there's, there's no proofs, there's no seriousness taken mm. about it. But they got a religion and they're into it and they believe in God, you know what I mean? But uh, you know what? God or multiple gods. Do, does, this is, I haven't studied mm. all religions, mm. but this is the powerful thing about Islam, right? Is that I, I have a theory that a lot of religions rely heavily and they hinge upon the dunya and earth. Okay, mm. this is what we see in front of us. Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, we have to open the Quran by saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim, right? And then we say, we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, like straight away, Rabbil Alameen. Okay, whatever. That's 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 it. That's encapsulate everything. Yeah. You know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to introduce himself to, the, to us as Rabbil Alameen, then there's no argument. Well, well what happens? Wherever, wherever, whoever comes from, wherever they come mm. from, Rabbil Alameen, it doesn't matter. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. If someone comes to you, to, you know, some extra terrestrial thing comes to you hypothetically and says, oh, I'm this and I'm that. Oh, it doesn't matter because Allah is Rabbil Alameen. It doesn't matter where yeah. you came from. Allah is your Lord as well. Very Do you know clear, what I mean? Yeah, yeah I know so what when, you mean. Like a lot of religions are not very clear they're gonna, about. They're not. And they're going to hinge upon, okay, look at like, I'm just taking one out of the top of my head, right? Uh, like Native Americans. Well, okay. I don't know too much, but look like Native American, like, um, you know, their belief system relies heavily on the environment that they've been surrounded with, mm. you know. And they got um, smoke signals, bro. Well, Tic Tac maybe smoke signals. Maybe back then, bro, but not now. <laughs> what else? Um, 
a lot of things, bro. Like a lot of things place um, importance in in where they've come from. Um, uh, what was I looking at? Like Polynesian. I mean, it's a bit old now, but you know, it's it's about their surroundings, what's in front of them. Mm -hmm. uh, even Hinduism, bro. Like certain lakes and rivers and whatever in in in, in India have. Yeah. So it's almost like oh this is the vein of the world okay but what about the rest of the world what's what's the story there oh, no this is focused on yeah it's very yeah. focused on the surroundings yeah. islam is not only a religion mm. that is for the whole of mankind yeah but all over the world it's also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rabbul alameen so it doesn't matter where you are Akhi. you're on mars bro you're on jupiter you're still a muslim and you still have to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bro you know something interesting when i was studying i think it was anthropology um christianity okay it, it literally struggled to spread, for example, to Scandinavia, because mm. the religion required certain rituals required like wine, for example. And you don't get wine up in Scandinavia because yeah. you need grapes and they can't yeah. grow it. So yeah. like they were struggling out there to get their wine, like either they, you know, they couldn't do it, you know, so the religion couldn't, can't really spread or they were struggling at least yeah. um, with it because it was so based on a specific like, you could say Mediterranean or European or whatever um, yeah, yeah, yeah. way of life. And, you know, Islam has, uh, I would say, some elements of that, but it's not that rigid, you know, like, for example, it's Sunnah to eat dates. Yeah. Um, what else? Some of the descriptions uh, in the Quran, you could say, oh, Jannah is more attractive to someone who would be living in the desert. Yeah. But it's not that rigid, man, at all. Um, no, no, no. And they're quite niche areas. You know, it's, it's, it's not stuff that you'd find in the core um, sort of belief system of Islam. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes it's like the the uh, the religion would influence the culture, not vice versa. So, for example, uh, pork is haram, right? Then you could say, oh, but how would how would you expect Chinese to become Muslim then? Because they eat loads of pork. Yeah, but if they had been Muslim, they would have, you know, phased that out of their culture and their, their yeah, yeah, yeah. diet and stuff. Yeah. And obviously they eat chicken and other things as well. So, yeah, it's, it's way more flexible. Um, yeah, I, I, you kind of got me intrigued, bro, about the sort of gin, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was just, I got the, uh, the translation here. So uh, from Aya 5, it says, uh, this is the gin talking, okay? And it's sort of gin is interesting because every Aya ends with, uh, that that rhyme like e -e -e, like kadiba uh, okay. rahaqa yeah mm. so um, it says and we this is the jinn talking and we had thought that mankind and the jinn would never speak about Allah a lie and there were men from mankind who sought refuge in men from the jinn so they only increased them in sin so uh, and there were men f uh, there were men from mankind. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the. Uh, let's actually talk about men relying on other men instead of relying on Allah to protect them from the jinn. Okay. okay, so there's some involvement, but it wasn't that they were. I thought it said that they were seeking refuge from the jinn, um, right. and they, and they had thought as you thought that Allah would never send anyone as a messenger. And we have sought to reach the heaven, but found it filled with powerful guards and burning flames. So I think mm. that's the um, area that the guy was referencing. Yeah. Okay, so it's like there's a barrier um, that they can't go past mm. um, in terms of going up to the, the sama, up to the sky, to the heaven. Um, and maybe that's linked with the area from Surat al-Mulk as well, where there's those um Ajana. this is the Najum, isn't it the stars yeah, Rujum, Rujum. yeah. Uh, which which hit the shayateen who tried to go to leave and but then, even on that on that point even yeah. contextually speaking Akhi, hmm. we don't know how far that barrier is because look at where yes. we can go so you know we've but, yeah but also allah is consistent right so if allah says sama at one time then usually it would mean the same sama elsewhere in the quran but then again there are seven summer oh, yeah, yeah this is what i mean yeah yeah um, go on no because uh what am i thinking of um uh from oh i think it's uh, sort of possibly um about what similar similar sort of top subject matter yeah i think it's where. sort of rahman bro where uh it's like uh try to break through it is it, a, is it a yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So we can maybe find that. Um, so he says, so they tried to reach the heaven, but they found it filled with guards and, and flames. Um, and we used to sit therein in positions for hearing. Mm. Okay. So we used to, uh, we're in uh, kunna naqrudu minha maqa'ida lissam. Is this like, so they go near the heaven and then they try and hear. Yeah. But whoever listens now will find a burning flame lying in wait for him. Okay. فَمَنْ يَسْتَمِعْ الْآنَ يَجِدْ لَهُ شِهَابًا رَصَدًا Okay. And then they've got this one thing, like a reference. Let me click on it, see what it... No, it's not it's really interesting, it. you know, contextually speaking, it's interesting. Because when they say they used to do that, but what point did that stop? Did it stop when, when, when mm. you know when the Quran was sent or when the Islam as we know it today was sent. Yeah. You know, or does that, does that then account for all the paganism and, and stuff that existed prior, you mm. know, and a lot of the shirk, because listen, the, the Quran, uh, the Sharia of uh, that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought down with him mm. uh, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is, um, is, it's not that old, you know, the, the, the Islam yeah, as we know it. Mm. Yeah. When, 1,400 years ago really isn't that, long ago so prior to that look at the history we have of god knows what kind of paganism and flipping uh you know um shirk and and, and and demon worship and whatever you want to call it yeah so if were they able to listen prior were they able to because it says that they they used yeah. to do these Kunna things naqa, yeah, naqa yeah. Do, yeah yeah um the, 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 there was a foot, footnote here it says before the prophet sallam the jinn used to collect information by eavesdropping on the angels and then pass it on to fortune tellers and soothsayers. There you go. So before, so it's essentially before Islam as we know it today, mm. before the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there mm. was more, so it sounds like there was more engagement. It sounds like with the dawn of Islam, at least with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a lot of mm. these, a lot of these stops have been put in place. Kind of like what I said, in the sense that it was mm. just before this rise of new atheism or this rise, yeah. And now I think since that time, a lot of the supernatural engagement between the humans and jinn has has been limited. Yeah, and a lot of people don't, you know, they don't do the whole um, fortune teller thing these days, isn't it? Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the kind of what they were doing. So they're listening from from the angels to to gather information. Um, and we do not know, therefore, whether evil is intended for those on earth or whether their Lord intends for them a right course. Mm, okay, I don't know what that means. And among us there are righteous, and among us there are others. Um, we were of divided ways. Oh, th there's a footnote there. There's, the magic's all in a okay in the, uh, in the footnote. <laughs> uh, in opinion, belief, and religious practice. Okay, so there's just different types of jinn, basically. And we have become certain that we will never cause failure to Allah upon earth, nor can we escape Him by flight. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to see what that maqa'id um, al-sama ayah meant. Mm. So, but it, it is interesting, Bob, because it is like that whole concept of uh, going up and, and getting information and then passing on to the humans, right? And so the humans, yeah. they could be, the humans could be treated as those kind of uh, fortune tellers and be elevated in status. Yeah. Or it could be that they are, like you said, like creating some kind of worship based yeah. on uh, apparent knowledge of the ghaib. And you know, how so much it, yeah. how much it would how much have they already heard that they can still use to their advantage? If they yes. were if they were listening yeah. in the past for like thousands of years, yeah. For thousands of years, you know, if they're listening to what the angels discuss or something like that, that that there's no limit on what the angels could be talking about and at what time they were talking and what they were talking about in terms of the dunya, you know. Mm -hmm. They could have been discussing things that are happening now or a thousand years from now or Allah mm -hmm. alam, Allah alam. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go into deep AS territory here. That's not my position at all. That's, mm. We're just literally spouting ideas here. But yeah. it's it's interesting to to say, like, you know, they there are men. If there's, there's people trying to take advantage of that relationship or connection they have with the jinn, that would have uh, had some sort of worldly benefit because they're passing it on to people that are basically making deals with the devil in a sense. Exactly. Um, yes. Yeah, and and you can, you can imagine as well that whoever has that knowledge of the ghaib they would be held in high status whether it's you know whether it's a, a leader like whatever caesar or some greek this and that uh, maybe they get knowledge of 
the enemy's movements or maybe they had knowledge of how to make new weapons or whatever mm, you know mm. and then translate that also into the modern day like uh, who knows bro like um technology um Dajjal. yeah dr true true i mean if you've got yeah. You know, if you've got, I'm not just talking about jinn here, but if you're talking about shayateen, if you've got shayateen mm. that are, in their eyes, destined for Jahannam anyway, but they are also, they desire to take others with them, yeah. you know, then of course they were gonna, they're going to try to pass that knowledge on to humans so that they can then bring Maybe those humans with them. Bring them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That would be an incentive. Yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of all links up, but, but it kind of points... Actually, I don't know if this points to the UFOs not being like UFOs being jinn and not being, you know, other creatures. I mean, of course, they, they could be two completely separate phenomenon, you know. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. There's nothing stopping. Although, it's, for me at the moment, well, at least for a lot of Muslims, I guess it's it's easier for me to reconcile that with the belief of that jinns exist because. Mm some things add up we obviously don't know everything about jinns we don't know anything about you know ufos or whatever um or aliens or whatever you want to call them but mm. the term itself if we break down the term a ufo or a uap or whatever it's called mm. things that they're, they're, they're things that are flying that we don't get we don't understand that's what it yeah. is we don't know what it is you know um if nobody had seen a seagull before in their life and they the seagull flew up over their head they'd call that a ufo as well because they wouldn't know what it was yeah. you know um same thing with aliens, bro. If you see some sort of like okay, you see some of the things in the deep, deep ocean, bro, and you think well, subhanAllah, that's, that's an alien looking that's thing. Alien you looking, don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't know what it is, yeah, yeah. Um but I don't limit the dunya to just this earth. I've never really limited the dunya, the idea of the dunya to here. Actually, the part you know, I, some of the images that come out of you know NASA and stuff of like other planets and you know I, I don't know if you've ever seen like HD images of Mars. Uh, mm. Like the ro the rover on Mars, bro. Mm. It's just incredible to think mm. that that's a completely different, you know, planet. That there's images being taken of it from you know ground level. It's yeah. insane to me. It's actually yeah. insane to me. Yeah. Um, and then I just start visualizing. Subhanallah, like this dunya isn't just. It makes me ponder very deeply about Jannah because it's like this dunya isn't just limited to this earth. It's everything Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created. You know, mm -hmm. in this realm. Um, mm. And we don't know, actually, like, how many stars do you see in the sky? How, and, like, we've, we talk about galaxies, we talk about nebula, we talk about, you know, all these clusters, and we think, subhanAllah, all of that, and it's just, uh, you know, mm. a drop in the ocean. Or so maybe all even of that, less. like, multiple universes could be within the seven. Yeah, seven it, could, mm. it could all be part of the dunya just to prove how, you know, the biggest... My, at least my biggest takeaway of it is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly and deeply showing us how small and insignificant we are because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bigger, stronger, more powerful than all of that combined, you know, mm. which is, it's, it's just, I don't know, bro. I, you know, I, 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 I can stare up at the night sky for hours and hours on end. And it's always been something I've done. Even when I was in, when I was living in Tunisia, especially, you know, we got the flat roofs and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I would literally stare at the sky for literally four, five hours, yeah. six hours at night, not like not moving at all because I'd have no interest in doing so. I don't, mm. It's one of the few things that I can do for that long and just not get bored. And I don't know why, because really you're just staring at the same thing for hours. Mm. But that feeling that you get of just being um, almost like a you know a pebble thrown in the desert, bro, is incredible. Like I just everything melts away bro when you look mm. up at the sky everything melts away um and you just realize how small insignificant fragile vulnerable everything that you are um and then just think about yom al think about how um you know the, the, all these discussions we're having they're of no benefit unless we we can really use them to empower us spiritually and empower our iman because to me the, the, the thought that there's things out there that we don't understand or there's potential out there that, you know, there's things that could be a risk to people's iman and we need to prepare ourselves for these sort of thought processes coming into our heads. It's it's iman boosting for me, bro. I think mm. uh, yeah, these thought exercises, is, you've got to be ready for it because if this is the, the discussion, like if, you, if someone came across that article 
without the, the mental preparation of what this means for them spiritually, then they're going to feel a certain type of way. You know, these things are going to come out in the news more and more. If it's if the Pentagon are coming out with them now, it could be that just the general public aren't ready for that. I mean, a lot of um, I read the background of that article. So I read the reporter speaking about when he broke that news he and how like he was worried because New York Times meant to be a very reputable newspaper. Mm. Right. So he was worried that him breaking that article would diminish their reputation because they would get lumped in with all the other sort of like sensationless media that comes out and stuff. Yeah. But he said that, I think from, from what I can remember, like what they said was just too strong to ignore. He had to basically write about it. Um, so we'll see, Echi. We'll see what more stuff that they reveal. We'll see yeah. what they discuss. And also we don't believe obviously everything they say. Um, we don't know. We don't believe it just because they said it. But if, even if we don't believe it, Echi, then what are the, what's their agenda, you know? Yeah. What's their agenda? Them saying that. Yeah, I think with all these things, the main thing is to interpret it in a way that obviously is in line with um, our belief. Mm. Because, uh, like you said, otherwise it could be used for the opposite. So we always have to have that Islam worldview, so that these things can't be used against us. Yeah. Um, and I guess that starts with having like some kind of firm conviction of the basics, right? The basics of what we believe. So, yeah. for example, uh, you shouldn't be shaken by, uh, for example, uh, we, we discover aliens and then someone, you know, atheist comes along and says, oh, you know, your Lord never told you about aliens, right? Well, yeah. you know, a Muslim with strong conviction, they would just be able to say, well, if Allah didn't tell us, we didn't need to know it. He, he gave, maybe he didn't tell us directly, but he told us indirectly everything we need to know to yeah, deal yeah. with it. Definitely and, definitely. and our religion is complete and blah, blah, blah. So you have to have these tools to deal with anything that could come because as we described and discussed in this episode, it's like um, anything can come and it, and a lot of these things can be used in a way that tries to push yeah. you away. Yeah. And this is, uh, you know, the the shaitan in the future, the, the, the dajjal and all the shayateen of the jinn, yeah. jinns and in, in, ins, they'll be working for that, you know, they'll and be working it. for that. You mentioned the Dajjal, bro. The Dajjal is one, you know, the main thing is to deceive you. And, and you know, when you read about the Dajjal, it's almost a lot of the a lot of the stories that you hear linked to the Dajjal. It's almost like he's presenting himself to people that don't even know their deen, you know. Mm. Because you would think that if we talk about the Dajjal, we'd instantly recognize him, yeah. you know. But clearly, there's people here that are being swayed and convinced by the Dajjal and his actions to the point mm. that they're not, they don't recognize him as something that's been prophesied to come, you know. Yeah. That's so true. it's mm. so this is why it's like you have to keep this preparation going because mm. when the Dajjal comes, if he was to come today, bro, people would think supernatural, alien, or extraterrestrial, something. They would, they'd have to align it to something, you know, extraordinary. And a lot of people, you know, no doubt are going to follow that, especially, mm. you know, people with no sort of, um, uh, what's the word? No um, alignment to any religion that can, can sort of account for that. Yeah. I mean, even just think of, Elon Musk, okay, the things that Elon Musk does, people, because people are kind of in this uh, worship of technology, mm. um, he's the god of that in a way, isn't he? He's doing mm. things that, you know, people call him the, the real life um, uh, Iron Man and all of oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's doing that. So he's, you know, sending space um, rockets up, bringing them back down. And you said that yeah. looked like phenomenal. It's amazing. I I've seen it once, but not from them coming from all the way up. You know, I've just seen oh, the yeah. last bit. Um, then he's putting like these uh, chips in the brains of pigs, eventually in humans. So you could see how that fits into this narrative of, you know, the Jedi will bring people back to life, you know, by the will of Allah. Mm. It, it, it could fit into that same narrative of, you know, people love Elon Musk, right? He's putting all these um, satellites to, to get internet everywhere on earth and all that. So people love him. People kind of see him as like this cool figure because of what he's able to do. Now, what if he was able to quote unquote, bring people back to life? Like how far would their admiration mm. of him take and it's, them? It's definitely not something that, it's definitely something that people are trying to do, you know, with research, with whatever. It's, you know, there's a lot of funding that goes into this stuff. Um, and that's it. Another thing, like what well, you know, if you have some sort of extraterrestrial jinn, whatever it is, and sowing some super advanced technology, then suddenly everybody's going to be jumping all over that and 
you know, it's going to be like some sort of modern day worship. Um, but yeah, bro, have a, I'll try and find that clip for you of those rockets landing because I was just because mm. I I didn't I didn't I thought it was a rocket launch because the video starts with them in the upper like sort of in the atmosphere. And I'm like, mm. you're looking at it from ground level, and it was like, oh, that's really cool. It's flying up, but then you realize actually it's coming down. It looks like it's falling. And then the jets come on as it's trying to land. And I'm just like, wow. And it just lands straight, bro. It's insane. Um, the maths that would have to be required, bro, to do something yeah. like that is insane. It is nuts, yeah. I think it it uses gravity. So it doesn't come directly down. It swings around the earth. Um, right. To, to, to slow it. So it's not a direct drop, Piani. Uh, and then obviously it's got the jet um, as well. The, the, the whatever it is, a rocket. Cool, bro. Let's wrap it up there, inshallah. Inshallah. I think with the gin thing, you can go into other topics as well, but that's another day, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, as usual, go to mindheistpodcast.com to send us your anonymous or non-anonymous questions, comments, feedback, suggestions. It's very welcome. And definitely we'll get, we'll get to all of those. Um, I think on the email side, we're actually you know cleared out all of that so there's no unread email so if you email us now then Charles will deal with it soon and yeah thanks for joining us this has been an interesting one uh, so it'll be good to hear your comments for sure <laughs> and yeah assalamu alaikum subhanakallahum wa bihamdulillah bye 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 bye